So don't you hate having to plug your controller in if you wanna charge it? This, this isn't the 2010s anymore. So I went out looking, of course, I talked about it in Newswave, and I wanted to find a way to make things slightly more convenient for way too much money. And that's what we're taking a look at today. I did get a hold of the PowerCast wireless charging grip that will work for our Joy-Con controllers. And this isn't using like a, a mat that you have to actually place the controller on and have contact. No, 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 this is going to be straight up wireless charging through the air over distance. It's kind of a small distance, but there's still distance between the controller and the spot that it's charging from with no cables in between. Now the company PowerCast describes themselves as the pioneer and leader of long range power over distance wireless charging technology using broadcast RF energy, which is radio waves converted into DC power. Since 2003, the company has provided solutions combining its FCC approved transmitters and receiver chips to enable automatic over the air charging of multiple devices, no charging mats or direct line of sight needed. Now radio waves are all over the place, right? It, most of us understand this at this point. We walk around with a cell phone in our pocket that gives off RF waves anyway. So think of that, think of the radio in your car, your TV, anything that has to communicate in the room wirelessly is using that. So. PowerCast decided, hey, what if we could take that and convert it into usable power and energy? And they did. They use it for several different devices in an effort to get rid of cables and having to use charging ports to actually charge devices. Problem is, it's still very early on, and we're gonna see some of the weaknesses here today as we check this out. And up front, I said it's a lot of money for very small conveniences. This whole set here that has like the, the wireless charging grip and the power spot transmitter is $150. And I don't really recommend buying it right now, to be honest, based on some of the limitations we have here. And that's why we're gonna check it out in a video today so you don't have to buy it to check it out. So I did grab this off of Amazon. You can see right on the front here, wireless charging grip, power spot transmitter bundle pack. And I have not opened it yet. I wanted to kind of experience this on camera with, with all of you so we could see exactly how this works and how easy it is to set this up. Because while it sounds cool, I'm not the, the most educated on RF energy being converted into DC usable energy. So we'll see how easy this works out. There we go. We have what looks like our wireless charging grip. This apparently has a battery inside as well. 915 megahertz RF energy compatible with Nintendo Joy-Cons. True wireless charging made easy. That's gonna be our brick that we have to use. And it says the wireless charging grip has an embedded battery which automatically begins charging when within power or range of a power spot RF wireless power transmitter. Just click your Joy-Cons in and they'll uh, top off using the stored wireless power. So this has a battery, it will charge. And when you put your Joy-Cons in, it'll charge from that battery that is being charged wirelessly. So there is uh, something in the middle between the Joy-Cons and this, uh, I guess we'll call power spot uh, is the idea. So let's, let's see, here is our power spot right here that is also working through Bluetooth. So you can sync up your phone to this and do different things. It'll tell you how, for example, something is charging, how much battery power it has, all of that. So I think we'll start by opening up the power spot wireless power transmitter first, and then we'll move over to the grip and test it out and see how that does. So funny thing happened, turns out my microphone decided to not record half of the video. It picks back up later on when I'm taking the stuff apart. However, for the unboxing and the testing, I'll just do some voiceover to explain to you what's what's going on here. So number one, the power spot itself is fairly light. There's not a lot to it. And for the most part, it's there specifically to convert RF energy and turn it into usable energy for our power grip. It has kind of that blue and black design on the front with their logo. On the top, we have our main power button that turns it off and on. On the back, there is kind of like a mounting bracket. So if you want, you can screw it into the wall. Or maybe I was thinking to like the under underside of a shelf, for example, in your entertainment center so that you can put the controllers underneath. I don't think that'll work though because of the line of sight 
that I ran into later on. Otherwise, though, we have a spot to plug our power into the side, and it uses a 5 volt, 1 amp USB adapter. It doesn't need much, to be honest. It's really not doing a whole lot inside, and there's not much to power. Moving over to the wireless grip for the Joy Con controllers, this is their receiver. So, what happens is you would be placing this in front of that power spot, and it will then charge a battery that is located inside of it. More on that later when we open it up. But I ran into a problem here. It is not very comfortable. It is very, very large. It's unfortunately not large enough to where it's more comfortable. Like a lot of aftermarket grips for the switch will increase kind of the area that your palm can grip. This goes a little too far and it feels just really bulky in the hands. While I can reach everything when the Joy-Cons are plugged into the rails, so it just slides in like a normal grip, it just doesn't feel great when you're using it. And overall feeling, of the plastics is fairly cheap, especially when you take the pricing into account. So the way this works is when you have the power spot on, you should be able to put different things in front of it that are set up to receive the power that it is transmitting. In our instance here, we of course have the Joy-Con grip that they sell, put that down in front of it, and as long as it's close enough, it'll have this green flashing light. If you start to move it a little too far away, however, it'll turn to a yellow flashing light, and then eventually it turns into a red flashing light. That's the slow lowest it can charge. If you get closer, yellow is medium charge speed and then green is fast charging. Now at about a foot is where it turns into kind of that red blinking light. So it has to still be very, very close. And on top of that, it also needs line of sight. So the front where that LED light is blinking, they show in the instructions that you have to be pointing that towards the front of the power spot. You can kind of angle it if you have multiple devices, but you can't turn it sideways and you can't turn it around so the back or the bottom of the controller grip is to it. This of course introduces a massive limitation of this. Unfortunately, having the ability to charge from multiple feet away does not appear to be possible, and this would be something that you would be eliminating a cable with that isn't really much of an inconvenience as it is, because you're probably just going to be placing the controller in front of it in the first place and just plugging it in or just dropping it on a charge station. The idea of having a wireless charging solution is really cool if, say, you could be playing the system and have it broadcast power to it from multiple feet away while you're sitting down, having to just basically drop this in front of the of it just eliminates the need to plug in a cable, which for a lot of us, especially going to USB-C where you can plug it in upside down or right side up, isn't a massive inconvenience anymore. All right, now we're going to go ahead and open it up. On the bottom, there are several Phillips head screws. And from here, I'll go ahead and switch back over to the other microphone where it decided to start recording for some reason. All right, so they had screws all over this thing. And uh, still, they also went ahead and uh, kind of clipped it together as well. I had to pop that free just now, but it actually makes sense why. So take a look at this. If we kind of remove this cable in here, we can see how large of an antenna they have on the bottom right here. And it makes sense why they want you to point it at the, at the power cast this way, where this is a large receiving antenna right here. We have what looks like our chipset that they use to, con uh, to at least receive the energy that's converted by our uh, brick over there. So let's see if we can pop this shielding off. There we go, nothing too crazy under here, just a few smaller components. Uh, no ma like major chip or anything that they're using there, but it is also running up. And I assume this is where our batteries are stored. So they are stored in the center. That entire bottom piece, now that I'm looking at it, is probably that large so they could fit some of these massive antennas in here for receiving uh, kind of the wireless power that they have. I mean, really, it goes from end to end here and then also down here. All right, with those screws off, the front plate pops out and we can see our Larger batteries here. These are kind of like, all right, so picture if you took a couple of uh, AAA batteries almost, wrap them up and then drop them here. That's for the most part, I'll say, kind of what they did. It's 960 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts. This this will recharge the Joy-Con controllers. So each one should get a full charge off of this, which is kind of the idea for these grips is to give each Joy-Con controller basically another charge, right? So that that should be fine, I would say, for what they're going for. It runs up to this guy here, which would convert power because, funny enough, this does also have a, uh, have a USB Type-C port at the top. 
So if you don't have access to your uh, wireless power brick over there, you can just plug it in. So, I mean, it's very similar still to Nintendo's charge grip. It's just very large on the sides. That's also not a bad spot to keep the battery since it's right in the middle there. We'll have a little bit of weight, but keep in mind because of how hollow this is, it's very light on the edges. So it's, it is definitely a lighter controller that hopes that the Joy-Cons can make it somewhat heavier. Think about that for a minute. The Joy-Con controllers uh, are what you would rely on to make this thing at least feel like it has some weight in your hands. Now onto the power brick itself that transmits the wireless power to that grip. It looks like they're using some fairly large torque screws on the bottom. This appears to be a T25 that they are using and it kind of drops in there. But from what I can tell, it goes from here all the way up through the top. So I guess they only have really two larger screws holding this thing together. And like I said, it's pretty light. So I have a strong feeling most of this is just one big antenna. All right, here we go. And that top part comes off. It was pretty easy to see which parts were like kind of sections. There we go. And that comes off. And here we are with, yes, that's just plastic there. So here we are with uh, the entire piece and that's why it felt so light because this is like everything inside. We also have metal shielding here, which looking at it, I would assume that is where our major chipset is. So we'll just go ahead and get this off. And here we go. looks like we have, from what I can tell, two major chips here that they would be using as well as one little guy right down here. On their site, they go over some of the chips that they do use to take RF energy and then convert it into usable DC power for our electronics. And it looks like these then run around to the back here where we have this very large reflective surface. And like I said, I'm not super into like how the RF energy and all that stuff works. I know there are people who are really interested in the idea of like wireless power and kind of pushing that technology forward. So maybe someone in the comments can let me know about this part here. It's, it's just a very reflective metallic surface. I feel like this is what they are mostly using as an antenna to push energy forward forward, but they also have this smaller board here as well, but it's very basic inside. I mean, this is, this is the entirety of it right here, that plastic base. The plastic base that, well, this base that I have here is $100 and then the grip is $50. So it's not really because it's built well even inside because it's really not. It's kind of cheaply built to be honest. I, it's just, it's gotta be the technology and they know they're not gonna be selling a ton of these right away. So that's all I can imagine is just because of the amount of R&D that goes into this, they ask for a much higher price. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for the power spot and the wireless charging grip for your Joy-Con controllers from PowerCast. Should you buy these? No, I, I really don't see a reason to pick this up with the amount of limitations that it currently has and the shockingly poor build quality as well. Really, there's not much to this and there's not much to this. And a lot of the price and cost, I guess, just comes from the R&D and the technology that's currently being used here. I, w I will say, I think it could be really cool in the future where we don't have to have batteries built in because we can have power just beam directly to our controllers or our systems or any of that. That is an interesting future to think about. But for now, it's a very early technology that we're seeing right here. It's, it's just not great. It's not one that I would spend $150 on, that's for sure. But let me know what you guys think about the idea of RF energy being converted to something that's usable by your electronics, like your Joy-Con, for example, down below. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you next time.